love the Stones. Sticky Fingers, 43 years ago today. Whoa. Is that the one with the zipper? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. The zipper album cover. It used to come with the actual zipper. Yeah, the zipper. You can try to find mixed cock in there. Um... So, what are they saying? A, a, a plane debris found uh, on uh, well, in Western Australia? They said, um, they said it was significant. They uh-huh. were using those weird, not weird words, but those words where they were being very careful I about heard, what, they, what they found. I heard they called it an object of interest. Object of interest. It wasn't a tape of this show. <laughs> no. <laughs> See, get it? it object of interest. No, because people would be bored by the tedious nature of our chatter. Object of sure. boredom. <laughs> yes. I guess it washed up on shore. And yeah. They're saying the more they look at it. They're not as excited. Oh, come on. Because I guess there's rivets, but then there's rivets with plexiglass or, or something, and they're like, well, that's not... Oh, that's not how they build a plane. That's not what? how they build a plane for the most part, but you never know, because maybe it's attached to something. Oh, so many false alarms. So they're like excited, that. but they're not as excited as they continue yeah. to look at this uh, significant piece of Damn. debris that won't washed up on shore. Debris. Wow, man. That is just uh, crazy. Just like we said yesterday, shit. the one thing we're learning is that the ocean is really polluted. A lot of it fucking has a shit. lot of shit in it. A lot of shit in the ocean just floating around. <sighs> this uh, this um, swatting thing is crazy. This is a new trend. <sighs> it's been going on a while, I it guess. It has, um, right? Using SWAT teams as a prank? Yeah. yeah you, call in a, you call in a situation and... To the point where the SWAT team shows up. Oh, but oh, I think but the, the SWAT team was in on the prank. Hell oh, no. Oh, okay, okay. That, that, I feel better about this. No, somebody was playing uh, Call of Duty with somebody else. Right. And uh, he got the shit beat out of him. And I guess there was some taunting going on. Right. Which happens in that game. And then the one guy didn't like the fact that he lost and was taunted. So somehow he had the other guy's address. Right. And, um, and called up the cops and said... That there's a big gunfight going on at this uh, address, and they right. sent the cops over there with weapons drawn, ready to for a a standoff or something, and you know, false alarm. Those are dangerous. Man. Yeah, that is. That's you get crazy. one wrong move, and fucking someone's blasting. Of course, dangerous shit. And you're liable too if you call it a false report. Oh, yeah. You're liable if someone's killed on the way oh, by the cops yeah. or the fire department. Well, yeah, yeah. You're the one that gets the fucking murder rap. Yeah. But it's not stopping people. They've been doing this for a while, That's like you ridiculous. said. ridiculous. They, they usually do it with celebrities. Yeah, yeah. Somebody did it with... Um, who was the big Corey celebrity? Feldman, I think. Corey had... He, I think Corey he had... He probably I called think it Corey in. called in his own. That was the rumor that Corey had called in his own. Oh, really? Yes, Corey. He's, uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't put it past him. No. Right? There, there was a problem. Like, I guess the, the uh, cops were outside this kid's door. Cops tried for 20 minutes to call Raphael to get him to come out. But he had headphones on and was still glued to his video game console. He didn't realize anything was going on. He couldn't hear anything, his brother said. I told him there's a bunch of cops outside that are looking for you. The you graphics imagine, are great. Can you imagine yeah. if you got Call of Duty or Call of Duty just cranking through the house, though, as the SWAT team shows oh, up? Man. Holy shit. Right? Or can you imagine you playing Call of Duty and then real cops burst in? You're like, this fucking game rules. It's a 3D <laughs> effect. Right. It's amazing. Yes, uh, Kenny. Well, you know how it went down. How did it go down? The cops knocked on the door, uh-huh. and the people said, who's there? And the cops said, it's the police. Right. Uh-huh. And they said in the house, how many are there? They are said, there's are there. two of <laughs> how many us. Are there? So are they there. said, talk to each other. <laughs> Much better. I got you both times. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> what do you mean he got uh, Didn't he say, I got you both times? Yeah. Well, I like uh, yeah. uh, over. Wait, how do you say it? over there? Over there. Over there. <sighs> yeah. So, anything else on that story? That's pretty much it. Yeah, it's. Where it, did it happen? The, originally, Long they were Beach, arguing. Long Island. Because they, they were. Where? They, Long Beach, New York. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. And they, they had an argument. It was an in game argument uh-huh. about what night they were going to see me at Caroline's. They, like, oh, the one, I don't, I, I'm wow. not plugging. It's not oh. about a plug. Oh. Uh, but he said Thursday. And yeah, I said Saturday. So yeah, Friday sold out, huh? That's just when they wanted to come. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy sold out Friday. Right. <laughs> a lot of a lot of racism going on in um, Call of Duty, though, over the uh, yeah. over the microphones. 
A lot of uh, a lot of black guys like playing Call of Duty Ghosts. I've noticed mm. a lot of them. You know, you fucking log what into a game, and you just hear well, like, "Yeah, motherfucker." Let's do this different today. Yeah. What are the What are they called? The white guys. Um, I don't know. No one really calls them anything. Peckwood. Well, if there's Asshole. a lot of racism and there's a lot of black guys, I understand the one angle, but I wonder oh, yeah. how they uh, you know come back from that. Well, it's just white motherfucker. Stuff like that. That's like what I mean. That. Oh, okay. oh, redneck, hillbilly, sister fucker. That like they That's go, what I mean. That's what I'm yeah, asking. Yeah, they go with the uh the hillbilly uh thing. Calling uh white guys hillbillies and shit like that. Seems, and then of course, you know, lots of N bombs being dropped uh, in that game. That's part of the uh part of your loadout. You know, you could go with oh. a fucking automatic oh. rifle uh and some N bombs. <laughs> Uh, Sal found a video. Go back. It's called. I don't. I don't know if it's gonna work. I understand. I don't even know if it's real, honestly. Oh, really? Yeah. It's it? called "Hilarious Black Guys on Call of Duty." Yeah. Oh, I hope it's real. All right. Bro, you heard what I said though. He want to turn up at McDonald's, bro. An hour after the party over, he want to turn up at McDonald's. Fuck out of here. We was like, nigga, you ain't dance on one female. Your ass one drinking shit, smoking shit. And now you want to turn up when we at McDonald's because you see a double cheeseburger? Fuck out of here. nigga want to dance on a McDouble. Yo, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell did Come you on, even God, say? Man, what are you doing? <laughs> you said what, bro? What, what did you, you even say? You said that way too fast. Get the fucking tags, man. You guys are talking way too fast. <laughs> I cannot understand right, you. So I went to a party, right? Yeah. I went there with my friend. All right. So he ain't want to dance or nothing, drink, smoke, nothing. He just sat there the whole party. So we go to McDonald's. We go to McDonald's. He want to start dancing and shit. He was like, "What you dancing for, bro?" And it, it, it's because he ordered a, Mc, a McDouble. Like, nigga, we was just at a party. You ain't want to dance at all. Now Is we he at fat? McDonald's. You want to dance? <laughs> Is he fat? Huh? Is he fat? Is he fat? Nah, he ain't fat. He just, I don't know, he weird. Like, he you know, weird. He with a yeah. It's all right. It's all right. But that's uh, that's usually the discussions you'll get. It's right. just as an in as that. I, <laughs> I've really just backed off on even putting on the headphones or using uh, the microphone. Really? It's useless. There's Are people no... ever rude to each other? Constantly. Oh, constantly. But what about the bullying campaigns? Ah, that ain't working Aren't, on Call of Duty, I'll tell you that much. They're not working? Nah. Are you sure? Positive. <laughs> Do they say racist things? A lot of racist stuff. A lot of racist stuff going on. I'm Call of Duty. I'm surprised you haven't uh, brought up your dream girl, and we've been on the radio an hour. Oh, no. You, you know this story? Uh, this, this woman was made for you. What is this? Teen. Uh huh. Everything sounds better when you have teen in it. Remember, we, we, guys, we, we, from the we old always days. Said that, sure. I haven't uh, brought that back in a while. But yeah. You add teen onto anything, and it's uh, it's way better. Uh huh. Cops. Teen had loaded revolver in her vagina. Whoa! And she's quite the looker. Well, how did that happen? So I'm, I'm thinking this might be your dream girl. That's nice. A 19-year-old uh, Tennessee woman. She's she's a hot little blonde. Tennessee, look at her. She's white trash all over. Had a loaded handgun hidden in her vagina when she was brought into jail yesterday afternoon following a collar for driving with a suspended license. A little Derringer-looking uh, revolver. How big is that thing? That's pretty small, but like, uh, what is it? Pew, pew, pew. Yeah, it's uh, it's no bigger or or wider than a, a than a than a vagina. A cock. <laughs> so, uh, oh, you could easily get. See, look at the hand. Right, a uh, chick could. Uh, oh, that's yeah. tiny. Easily uh, get that up or twat. Women laugh at that. That's oh, easy, yeah, right? That's nothing. That's nothing to them. Yeah. As Dallas Archer was being booked into the Kingsport Jail, a female corrections officer alerted to an unknown object in the teenager's crotch during a search. Oh, boy. The jailer and a female cop then accompanied Archer to a bathroom mm. for further examination. Bend over and grab your ankles. That's right. A review that led to the recovery of a North American Arms 22 LR mm. revolver Don't loaded. She was loaded. 22. Which Miss Dallas had concealed in her vagina. Wait, who's that? <laughs> oh, man, that's sexy. According to Kingsport Police Department report. A subsequent check revealed that the five-shot mini revolver, which is four inches in length, had been stolen from an auto bur uh, burglary in 2013. The handgun, which police valued at blah, 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 bl
That's one stinky holster. That's <laughs> yes. nice. I do like that. Well, what do we got here? Mm, well, <laughs> well, what do we got here? <laughs> wow. She's fucking let me go squirreling get, it up there. Yeah. Hey, let me go get my gloves. <laughs> I'd, more, I'd have more respect for if it was a desert eagle. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're going to have to bend over a little more. Yeah, well. We're going to have to investigate. There's something up there. <laughs> well, let me what, check that out. What is this? <laughs> I best taste it first <laughs> right. before we do any further investigating. I should taste that. Of course, we want to be safe. Make sure there's no explosives oh, up well, there. Oh, well, indeed, indeed. <laughs> We're going to have a taste test. Oh. Oh, boy, are we. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> I have to reach in and set the safety before we try to remove it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we better check the asshole just to make sure. Yes. There's no ammo up there for your gun that's in your vagina. <laughs> Some other weaponry. That's how I imagine it goes down. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it's just some fucking mess of a woman. All right, bend over. Yeah. Fucking loves. Hey, we got something here. We got something up for snacks. Yeah. Right? Don't move. Pin her down and fucking pull that shit out. All right, we need you to lay on your back, okay? We're going to spread your legs a little bit. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. Wow, I do like that. Hey, pass the lube. We, we don't want to hurt her as we remove this. A loaded foreign object. Fucking, a loaded <laughs> yeah. pistola. Right Is that there a mugshot? Bad. Look at that. Oh man, she's a hot mess, as they like to say. She's a goddamn. Uh, she's a hot mess. That is the epitome of the white trash girl. Right. The fucking bleach blonde hair. She just looks like uh, she cuts uh, cut out of school a lot. She got her eye makeup on, all fucked up. Would you? Oh, oh fuck yeah. Um, let's fuck say. Fuck yeah. Hi to Mark in Boston. Alice Archer. That's a cool name, too. What's up, boys? Hey, buddy. I wish, I wish New York was as strong as you guys. I got to be honest with you. You guys know how to handle a situation up there. What do you got? Give it six, give it six months. Something will happen in Dallas. Then we'll all wish we were as strong as those guys down there. Uh, this mm. this swatting this swatting thing's been going on for about two years, and I know Ant's not a huge fan of Twitchy because they gave him some shit about Gail Maroney. However, they've been on the forefront of this because Malkin was swatted. Eric Erickson, who's on CNN, basically <laughs> it's anyone who's a leftist activist that doesn't like a talking head that's a right winger that they know owns guns. They'll yeah. just say, "Hey, I shot my wife. You guys better come take a look at this," and then hang up. The cops have to go. That's and if they know that there's gun owners or whatever there, they have to show up with guns drawn, and they're hoping that some right-wing, you know, pundit's going to wind up getting shot over them. Yeah. You do a Google search wow. for Brett Kimberlin. That's fucked up. Right. He's the guy that originated this, and it's it's really fucked up, because that guy was a terrorist that did bombing in the 70s, and he's one of those Occupy types. <laughs> so he's calling in fake, bo fake threats to the cops to get uh gun owners shot are these guys getting a well, yeah but jimmy it's not gun owners it's like ann coulter type like i don't like you ann coulter because right, you're a right. right wing shill so i'm gonna say hey ann coulter has guns i'm gonna call in a you know a fake hoax and hopefully the swat team will wind up shooting her what a scumbag yeah that's who, who is uh, the scumbag and, 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 and well brett timberland is one person that, that that has been associated with it oh but cele it's happened to celebrities too like, yeah. I think uh, Chris Brown's house was swatted. He wasn't even home. I mean, he's a scumbag. Fuck him. But, right. I mean, I don't want to see the kid shot over some asshole calling it a fake, you know, a so, fake, you know, murder investigation or something. So the the people calling in these uh, fake threat, uh, threats or whatever, are they getting arrested at least? Well, that's the thing, Opie, is uh, whoever's doing this or whoever are doing this are smart enough to, to use, like, uh, computerized phone lines that are getting bounced from, you know, here. Yeah, to it's very it hard to trace. They right. can't trace it. Wow. That's so dangerous. How oh, do you trace fuck. those numbers? I don't think you can. You could just hey, you guys are having buy a one. Oh, well, whatever. Later on? Uh, say that again. Are you guys having Russell Simmons in later on? Yes. Yes. Can you ask him a question sure. for me? This is a legitimate question. I, I don't think anyone's ever asked him. Oh, okay. He, he's, he's like a bazillionaire, and he was in favor of Occupy Wall Street. How can a guy who owns a credit card company and is essentially a banker go out and protest against scumbag bankers mm. when he's a bazillionaire himself? Russell's a weird guy. I, I don't think he was necessarily... We should ask him that. Yeah, that's a, that's good a good question. question but I, I don't think he was like, you know, 
more even thinking it through was more like, hey, these guys are uh, mm. hey, they're fighting are, power. Or good. Yeah, but Jimmy, he sh- he showed up down there and he was protesting and holding signs with people. Oh, you know what? Maybe I'm wrong then. Okay. There's a lot of uh, liberal people that uh, don't do the old practice what they preach you know sure. so well, they're, I mean, they're, they're like no yeah the social cause is man we're gonna do this and then you know like michael moore they have uh, giant houses uh far away from the the places that they uh supposedly champion you know exactly i just i no one's actually asked him that i've found in the media that can say all right hey you stand well, for X, but you're actually doing Y. Yeah, How can yeah. you justify that? Yeah. Well, Mark, you're going to be around later. You should ask the question. I'll be at work listening. You guys are my desk like I do every day. I appreciate oh, that. Like yeah, a we'll, treat. Take it easy. All right, we'll, we'll try him. to ask him that. Thank you. Later. It's All a right. book on meditation, and I actually am really want to do this because I'm so sick of not sleeping. I'm hoping meditation you helps. Think meditation? I don't know, man. i got to try something. You try the other thing that kind of sounds like that a lot. <laughs> See? Masturbation. Oh, okay. Oh, that that does help, though. Very well. Does it well, it not keeps for me Jimmy. awake. No, because uh, I have to keep uh, jumping up and pissing. Uh-uh. <laughs> my stupid prostate starts doing the fucking... The, 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 I couldn't think of the a dance. The Watusi? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was trying to pick a new dance. The <laughs> rumba, but it's on a dance. Meditation made simple. I meditate a little bit. I'll try to read this. What thing. is that about? The power of the present. You meditate. It's too quiet. I know. I like a little. Ugh. The power of the present. Oh. I, med- I meditate while watching television. <laughs> Can't do that. Sit there, quiet, and just watch TV. You would be freaked out if you were. You, I just you went don't silent. like the quiet. That's what I'm saying. Because hear that my own tinnitus. It's wonderful. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, you know, it occurred to me the other day when I was talking about my stupid job, fucking in air conditioning and heating. Right. That uh, I bet part of my tinnitus problem isn't so much the band as it is sitting there bashing sheet metal with a hammer. <laughs> It just it's just so loud. Thunderstorms all day long. That's what it is. I know. There's something called a um a uh Pittsburgh seam on on a duct where where it's like most of the time you just put like tab A and slot B and fucking bang it together and it's like very right. easy. But this Pittsburgh one is for very heavy gauge duct work for big pieces and you gotta use this pneumatic hammer. It fits into a compressor, you know, psh, bah, 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 and and you lay it on the sheet metal, and you're supposed to bend over this little eighth inch flange over the top of the other piece that you slid in to to fasten it, Jesus. and it's on this giant piece of sheet metal, and it's going. It's so fucking loud. Did you like using it? I hated that fucking thing more what? than anything. And. Why don't you wear earplugs? You can't. Because you constantly be taking them out of your ears to hear what someone's saying to that. It, the, the safety equipment is, you know. And I bet your fellow workers would, would say stuff like, don't be a faggot. Exactly. Yes. If you did don't wear the be ear, a faggot. Earplugs. Oh, is that, is that, is that it? Yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah, that's where you got it. That's. It's and do you know what that sounds like in, in the shop? Yes. When you're trying to make it? Every girl I've dated. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Why, that's, why do they call it the Pittsburgh lock? I would uh, guess that some gentleman in, in the great city of Pittsburgh Willie Stargill? said, um, I'm going to do it this way. Ah. No, I probably said it. He's probably just said, hey, uh, you need a flange over there. Over there. Over there. <laughs> we got to put this together. <laughs> That's Order. Chicago. <laughs> That's that was the Chicago, Chicago joint. Yeah, it was just the loud. And then when when you want to cut a hole in a duct, let's say you want to cut a fucking hole in there for an outlet, you you take a screwdriver, you put it against the fucking duct, and you hit that with a hammer to rip. A tear in the sheet metal, so you Jesus. get your snips in there. So that's more. Did you get cut a lot? A lot. <laughs> you did. Oh, I got cuts all over. I got scars all over my hands. Right. Yeah. The sheet metal. Yeah. Oh, I would have hated that. Like you grab it and you feel, oh. and then you go like, oh, oh, you close your hand real tight, and you go, oh, 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 and then you look and go, yeah, that stitches. How many that's times fun. did you get stitches? 
Uh, probably three. Bitches get oh, three you got times. Stitches in your fucking hands. Yeah, yeah. Probably three times from work, but uh, so many more. You'd cut yourself. Uh, you only got stitches if you really needed it, because right. usually you'd cut yourself, take some duct tape, sure, just wrap it, take a napkin, slap it over the fucking wound, duct tape it up, and get the fuck back to work. Because it was a clean slice. Yeah, those you could push back together pretty yeah. easily. Another real bad one was. Um, uh, these hanging ceilings like this, right. usually when we came in, these weren't in yet, right. the hanging ceiling, because the ductwork has to go above it. Right. So uh, sometimes, though, they would prep the ceiling. Every corner you see, pretty much, there's a wire that comes down. They look beautiful. And they hang this ceiling from these wires. Right. But before they hang it, the wires are a lot longer and then they clip them to size after they, right. they fasten it. So they're hanging down these very sharp wires are hanging down. And I was climbing up a ladder once, and one got me right in the shoulder <laughs> and just stuck right in me, in my shoulder. Fwock! Like, ah! Whoo, pulled down, and, and there it was. A big hole in my shoulder. Are you bleeding? Oh, yes. I went home that day, angry. Then there's another one where you have your, your 25-foot uh, extension ladder, and you got to lean it against a, a, a ceiling joist in, like, uh. a factory, and it's just about hitting the joist like 25 feet oh up my God. and you got to climb it and it's shaking and then and then you're leaning off of it a little bit over to one side going i'm i'm going to i'm going to die were you ever nervous i was sometimes <laughs> shaking <laughs> shaking because then you put a drill screw in in your uh, little drill bit thing right. and now you got to put pressure on it as you're you're trying to drill screw into the ceiling decking so you're pushing down on a ladder that you're leaning off of, and sometimes the drill screw would go, like snap out of the bit, and you would you would like it would jostle you Did one you way or fall? another. No, but I came close one uh. time. The, one time the ladder actually slipped down a little bit. When how like high up were you? Down about twenty feet. Were you scared? <laughs> Petrified. <laughs> Petrified. Uh. Oh, it was so scary. Isn't there a way to stop that from? I would hate to climb a ladder. Well, like you're that. supposed to fasten it. There's a lot of safety things you're supposed to do, but it just takes too much time. It's bad, but it, no one does them. Fasten because, it with what? From the top to the joist? Yeah, you're supposed to tie it off to the joist. Um, when, when you're uh, uh, trying to get on a rooftop, you extend the ladder a good two, at least two feet above the top of the roof, so you have a, a handle when you step onto the roof. But a lot of times you don't have that. So right. you're, just, you're barely on there, oh my God. on the roof, and then, and then you're supposed to tie it off on something up on the roof so the ladder doesn't fall over. Right. You don't do that. What do you do when you're getting down and there's just a little... That was, I had that when I was a kid trying to climb out of something. Oh. And there was a little teeny lip, so you got to kind of like hang on to something and put your feet over the edge. It's so scary. <laughs> it's so fucking scary. I would just yell I help. I am so glad I don't have to do that anymore. Why did you get into duck work? It so It was the only unskilled labor oh. I could get. Oh, my God. <laughs> I went from being a guy that installed above the ground pools to the tin knocker sheet metal guy. Why did you give up the pool business? It was very seasonal. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. And there was no pay at oh. all. Oh, it was terrible. Phew. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, if you're into above ground pool or any pools, you don't want to do it here. No, it's you, know, you should have moved to Florida. It yeah. sucked For too. More work. That job sucked. Well, most jobs suck. Yes. That one was just sounds awful though. It was you were in constant fear for your life. Isn't above ground pools easier though? Just dig a um, big fucking area out. All right, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Put some yeah, hose. I would think. Oh, when they they used to get these giant trucks, these boom trucks with uh, you know the big boom and the cable to to lift these giant air conditioning units that are like the size of freight trains onto the roofs of these factories and stuff, and you'd be standing there underneath the unit. Like, all right, prep the unit. You'd have to take off you the... You heard that uh, before, didn't you? The, <laughs> prep the unit. Yeah, except the unit was something else. <laughs> Bull. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But you'd have to take these temporary, like, covers off of the intake and exhaust of these units. And, uh, and so they're dangling like that. That's exactly one. They dangle these fucking units, and you'd have to be underneath this. It's just precariously perched... Uh, above Jesus. you on a cable, you're, you're just trusting everyone did the right job, and that's your life. You think anyone ever got hurt doing that? Oh, I bet. I bet a lot of people got hurt. That's uh, 
That's crazy. It was terrible. Could you ride up on the top of that? I'm sure you it would hold yeah, your Yeah, there weight. were people that, that would do that, ride up on, on the unit. Oh, my God. Wow. It's bringing yeah. back great memories. Uh, Everybody I know there wants are... to say hi. Uh, D no. in Minnesota. D. Hey, how you doing? Hey, D. I'm so nervous right now, so forgive uh -oh. me. That's all right. And What's up, D? Okay. You, you, my name is Dean from Brainerd, actually. Oh, Brainerd. Minnesota. Oh, yeah, come oh, on oh, up. Oh, I got brown a you can stay in. Babe, the blue ox. <laughs> yep, Paul Bunyan. They uh, <laughs> funny to talk about setting rooftops. That's what I'm setting today. Oh. You know, and actually, when I listened to you on mass, I actually weeped when you were talking about how you threw your uh, sheet metal tools out on the road. Wept. Right out there on, on uh, yes, right out on 95 as you I know, drove man. up. Did you? Yeah. You threw all your stuff on the Right out the fucking window. I was like, yeah, could always buy new ones. $40 and a pair of crimpers are 45 you know, these days. Crimpers? Some of us can't. Crimpers. I know. I would usually just, uh, I would try to uh, uh, just trim down my uh, equipment so I didn't have to carry so much. So I would just use uh, needle nose pliers uh, to crimp uh, clinch collars with. What's crimping that mean? Yeah, it was so you could slide uh, a piece of pipe into another piece of pipe uh, of the hack. same of the same diameter. You'd have to crimp the other one. What's that mean? Open the, to the hole? It means like kind of close it down a little bit. You'd have to oh, like, right, like, right. put little creases all around the diameter so uh, you could slide it in. Wow. Yeah, it's like docking. It's, it's like, like squeeze. Yeah, it's it. like putting a foreskin on the fucking yes, uh, thing. Yes, it's like putting your dick into another man's foreskin. Comment, Sal. Comment. <laughs> oh, <not really>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, D, you survived. Thank, Thank you. you sir. Let's go to Kyle in Boston. Ka -ka -ka. Hey, what's going on, boys? Uh, Ed, you ever, uh, you ever work in a scissor lift? Oh, fuck yeah. Those are scary shit, too, especially with duct work, because you you got to do a lot of maneuvering and stuff. And, and when, you, when you're trying to put a, a slip and drive connection together, and you got to angle it a little, so you're kind of leaning over the edge of the scissor lift, and it's... It's like going back and forth, and you, they, you've seen him in, in the, yeah, in the lobby. Right yeah, oh, right, yeah, right, right. So you're up there about 20 feet, and the fucking thing's going back and forth. Yeah, those get a little creepy, too. Scaffolding, I wasn't a big fan of either. The Time Warner building, when you walk in there, they have some great restaurants, and but there's like an overhang, and in the very entrance, it goes all the way up to the... So it's probably 50 feet, I would oh, say, no, even in higher. that lobby, 70 feet. At least. And they have these giant banners that hang down, and they use those scissor lifts yeah. to get up and hang the Christmas banners right. or whatever. They look fucking horrifying. It's very... When, when they're up really high, and then sometimes you'd want to go down to the next piece of ducts, because the ducts are usually eight feet long, uh, so you'd have to go to the next one, and you didn't want to waste the time of lowering the scissor lift all the way down, driving it eight feet, and, and lifting it back up, so you would actually drive, which you're never supposed to do, drive it as it's elevated up Jesus. 20 feet, like really slow, just try to Edge it along. That's so you, crazy. <laughs> that was really it's very creepy. top heavy at that point. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> I, I tipped one of those over one time oh. at a job site. At, and oh. I was rocking it, trying to get a move, and then uh, I had an apprentice up there with me that was petrified. So I started fucking with him, rocking back and forth real hard. Yeah. And I got it bouncing wheel to wheel, and then we went too far one way. Luckily, there was an I beam that caught us at like a forty five degree angle. Oh. I almost killed the fucking. No kid. horse oh. play. No horse play. It's amazing how those things can be stopped by one drill screw on a floor, though. Really? Yeah. You drive it, and all of a sudden, boom, it just stops dead. Like, what the fuck is in my way? A drill screw. I was on a fifth lift about 800 feet in the air one time. It's impossible, Chip. No, you weren't. Oh, shit. Are those Let's... dead guys? Whoa. How high was that? Uh, not Fort Lauderdale high. scissor lift accident. The platform toppled. Jesus. Is that the top part, the platform? It looks like the whole thing tipped over. Wow, that's fucked up. Platform would be on the bottom, right? Whoops. I don't know. What's it called, yeah. the thing you stand on? Let's say hi to uh, Steve in Central Jersey. Steve. Yes. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey. Hey, listen, listen, man. I'm just sitting on my 40 foot ladder now, and usually you never even think about these things. Yeah. But after listening to you this morning, like I know it's going to be windy as shit today. Oh, uh, tie it off. Against, uh, it ladders up against the gutter, moving around a little bit. Oh, so oh. I'm thinking, you've been there 20 years now, right? Isn't that like a cop? 20 years, you could just retire? Yeah, I know, right? Trading <laughs> place. What are you supposed I could to step right in? I'm a funny fuck. Oh, so you, so you could take over the gig. Yeah. Another tin knocker. Hey, what are you supposed to tie that to at that height on the roof? What will you tie it to? I, I, I tie off the trees. 
You know, wow. usually it's a tree because that's the only thing close enough. On yeah. a roof, you could use a vent pipe sometimes, or uh, you could, I, I, you could, if if it's really uh, got stout gutters, you could like vice grip it to a gutter. But vice grip right. your ladder? Uh, yeah, you just fucking and then click, clamp you, it whatever on. Whatever you can do. Yeah, hey, whatever Jimmy, you can do. The Brunswick's love you, Jimmy. The Brunswick's love you. Oh, Thank you. All ask. right, let's go to Adam in uh, Jersey, Adam. Yeah, hey, uh, Ed, have you ever used a Weezer Foggle? What the hell is a Weezer Foggle? <laughs> I think he's being... Oh, okay. Facetious. I did. It scared me. I think Let, he's being facetious. Let's go to Shane and Charlotte. Shane. Hey, I'm a workers' comp insurance adjuster, and hearing the way you've been talking about skipping some of these safety things make me cringe. <laughs> I get pictures all day long of blood-stained and pale people from doing the same things you're talking about. It's nasty business. It's true. We, we used to, when we, me and my brother worked in the shop over a true mechanical, uh, we'd go out for lunch and just go to the bar next door. We'd bet the horses from an OTB that was right next to the bar, and then we'd sit there and drink and then go back into a shop full of machines, custom-built to chop your limbs off. There's a, 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 something called a, a pneumatic brake and this thing would bend 90 degree angle bends in sheet metal. So you'd make a square duct with it, you know, you'd mark off where you want it to bend and you, you put it in there and then you hit the foot pedal and this big blade comes down ah. and just goes duck unk and bends it. And then you gotta fucking jockey Jesus. it around. But that is just custom made to fucking chop your fingers off, especially drunk. We'd have a good buzz. The whole shop would go and drink. You think anyone ever got hurt using that? I bet a lot of people have uh, <laughs> fucked them. There it is. Wow. <laughs> oh, my a, God. You could, you could work in my dangerous. job for one day. You'd be amazed at the way these people can hurt themselves. It's yeah. almost impossible to dream of what these people do. Amazing. I've, their bodies apart. I've watched so many factory videos on, on, like, you know, these sites of people who, like, hands caught in oh, this yeah. and machinery where their hand looks like a just a, a piece of yep. meatloaf. That's called degloving. That's one of the worst things. De degloving. Wow. What's degloving? Oh, when the skin pulls off of your hand all the way like you're taking a glove off. Uh, and you're just left with a skeleton hand? Uh, mostly tendons and muscle. And oh my uh, god. god. Ah. <laughs> well, we're looking at one now a degloving injury. Where well, they got their, their Wow, arm. it's like pulled. What the hell? The skin is pulled off of the I don't know what Normally, that is. Normally, the kind of machine that'll do that, there's no way to get that skin back to on your hand because it grinds it and crushes it up so much. So you basically have to get skin grafts from your legs, and it takes years. Oh, my God. Ah. Jesus. Ah. Myofacial degloving. Come on. I want to see that. Oh. It's a great name. Off, oh, yeah. All right. I like a de-socking. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. The guy's... Jesus. The skin just came right off of his fingers. A myofacial like degloving. Skeleton hand. You think you'd have the, the frame of mind to, right when that happens, to just go to your coworker and go, boo. <laughs> <laughs> like, boo. Scary a little yeah. joke, a little levity. Probably sure. not. No, no, you, I don't you, think you'd so. Probably be like, you'd say what I said when I went to the hospital. Pray for me. Oh, did you say that when I had a, a head injury from a baseball hitting me? <laughs> what? My head split open, <laughs> oh, no. and they called the ambulance because I was bleeding profusely. Yeah, and I was a little woozy, so as they were carrying me out on the stretcher. I, I think I said to my parents, "Pray for me." Oh, <laughs> Ew! <laughs> Who says that? I did. Little Jimmy. Yes, I did. Aww. How old were you? Thirteen. Fourteen. Aww. Pray for me. Yeah, not not a good. Uh, oh, did your dad just look up in the air and go, oh, "Fuck"? Yeah, he's probably like, "Look, oh, I know your wife's my style. daughter." <laughs> 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 oh, guys, that's what we all about four months ago from Howard, and I'm glad I did. Y'all are awesome. Oh, thank all you, right, sir. Thank you, brother. Uh, let's say hi. Oh, man. Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah, this guy's been in the trade for 30 years. Uh, uh, Freddie in Orlando, Florida. Freddie. Hey, what's up, boys? Listen, I'm retired now, but uh, I was in the AC trade. I used to run the line sets, purge the lines. I uh, yeah. work in the attics. And those lines all right, feed it through. through. Feed it. Hold it. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. All right, bring it through, bring it through. Oh, yeah, just yeah, you're yelling. Those yeah, fucking, those fucking line sets in the residential when they had that John's Manville, that pink panther fucking fiberglass insulation. <laughs> yes. You remember that first week on the job? I didn't know to wear long sleeves. That shit makes you itch. But it was, and the worst thing, this is weird. Put mustard on, I eat that shit. I got a problem with public restrooms. I don't know what you all did, but back in the day. We didn't have porta potties. We had to carry around five gallon 
paint buckets yeah, to take a dump. I've in. talked about the spackle bucket dumps uh, that everybody had to take. Yeah, no bathrooms. But yeah, that installation was so bad. And sometimes you'd show up to a job, and, and yeah, you'd, it was the summer. You'd be wearing short sleeves and realize, oh fuck, I got an attic job today. And and it would hurt. You feel like you had little pins in you for for days. You'd feel it, and it was fiberglass just shoved into your your pores from reaching your arms through it. Yeah, you'd have to because there's no safe. You can't just delicately put the ductwork. You're ripping fucking insulation. The dust is f like filling the attic. Wow. In the air, I, I would wear a, a, a mask, a respirator mask. But uh, but you'd get it all down your back. Was it hot in that mask? Oh, was it fucking... You know, sometimes it would get so wet you couldn't even breathe through it. It was just soaked in sweat. Terrible. I um, have a story, too. While you oh, were doing right. that, I yeah. was trying to figure out the proper way to like seg a Jethro Tull song into a Yes song. And I just <laughs> couldn't get it quite right for so long. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I have your answer, by the way, how you do that. Oh, wow. oh. That was Jethro Tull. Do you like them? Yes. Oh, oh, you want to try it? Let's try it. Oh, I just How heard. How do we a, do this? I just heard a moan of pleasure from down the hall. What could <laughs> that have been? I think uh, Jenny would have liked let, that one. Let's say hi to Jeff in New Hampshire. Jeff. Hey, guys. Hey, Jeffy. Hey, I do. Uh, I do heating and air conditioning, and oh. one of my accounts is is called Road to Responsibility, uh, oh. and they have mentally handicapped adults oh. that they. Yeah. 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 So, so they have like thirty of these people in a in like a little warehouse, and they do packaging and like menial jobs. Oh, of course. So I was working in there with a ten foot step ladder, and I had to run out to my truck. And while I was gone, one of the guys climbed the ladder <laughs> and sat at the top and started to cry because he couldn't come down. And the fire department had to come. <laughs> come on. Still From there. a 10-foot ladder? 10-foot yeah. step ladder. He climbed oh. all the way up and just sat on the top. Oh, jeez. And they were like, come on, come down. You know, you got to come down. And he started to cry, and he wouldn't come oh. down. He was afraid. He was, like, turning around. And, uh, and I'm trying not to laugh. Yeah, oh, right. It ended up being like an hour. The fire department had to come in with two other ladders, set them up on either side, and go up and carry the and guy down. We got down. a 322, a dummy on a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck down <laughs> off my step ladder. <laughs> <laughs> my step ladder. Very good. All right, guys, see Thank you. Let's go to Joe uh, in Long Beach. Hey, what's up, Anthony? This, this, I just yeah. wanted to know if you remember getting stuck in the hand by installing duct pins on the ductwork, the insulation. Oh, yeah, those pins. <laughs> On that little pin machine? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. Put the insulation on top of it and you get stabbed in the hand. Yeah, sometimes the insulation would go like inside the duct, so right. there'd be this uh, glue that you'd have to put it. That was another thing, the fucking glue. This stuff smelt like like you knew it was toxic in yep, any fucking to form. And you're there spraying this blue fucking goopy glue on so the insulation could stick on the inside of the duct. And then it would put, go in this machine that, like, put these pins in to fasten it on, and you're just breathing it in and getting dizzy. Oh, how do people do this job for any length of time without just dying or you, being retarded? How long did you do this? Uh, probably from, let me think, 86? 80. From 86 to 94. Four. Nice. Yeah, you go. That was about it. Did you ever get glue on yourself? All the time. And when it got into the crease in my elbow, like, like, yeah. up there, and it would go. You didn't like that? When you moved, oh, it was terrible. You'd have to go in and, and use, like, the goop, the goop stuff in the, in, in, with the, 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 uh, uh, pumice in it to clean up at the end of the day. Now I understand why you didn't want me to blow it up. Oh, when, <laughs> when, when that fucking. I kind of understand dead mayor, a little more. <laughs> dead mayor April Fool's thing happened. I was having all of these flashbacks, like, I'm just going to be back in the glue fucking thing, and back in the attic, and you insulation. Think, you must have thought, like, radio guys were just sissy boys. Oh, a bunch of fairy Marys. Did you ever feel like, uh, I don't know, like, Jesus Christ, we're not even working? Uh, yeah, I still do. <laughs> I, I do. I, yeah. the, the hardest part of this job is getting up in the morning. Right. That's it.
Oh man, I pictured me back with the Pittsburgh joint. You and Willie, hey, Willie Stargell. You, didn't you used to do what? Well, I'll what? try it again. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, this guy, I don't know. He's got fingers, or used to, or something. Uh -oh. Alan Buffalo. Ow. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, I used to work in the sheet metal shop while we made conveyors. And this one kid, first day on the job, and we used one of them presses that would cycle. It wasn't pneumatic. And you had to run the whole cycle. You couldn't back it off. And he's pressing bearings into the end of these tubes that we use for the conveyors. Put his fingers right in front of it. Cut his fingers right off, not a drop of blood. I had to go cut that stupid tube in half and get his fingers out so they could take him to the hospital. How, how many fingers did he lose? He lost two fingers. Did they put him back on? Yeah, they got him back on because it was such a pinch to, when it pinched a bit, when the bearing went into the tube. It pinched it so tight, you know, cut him right off, not a drop of blood come out. Wow, really clean Jeez, cut. Amazing. So it's probably easier to reattach. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it wasn't bad, but the, uh, the worst part was cutting that goddamn tube open and just, you know, shaking it down and getting the fingers and out. And getting the there. fingers out. That happened to me once when I was in jail. My <laughs> friend wanted to paint, and the warden took his paints, so he chopped uh -huh. his fingers off, and um, I had to plank them into a little a little wooden uh, carrying Where case. Where did he get the hatchet from? Mr. Zimmerman uh, <laughs> loaned them to him, and uh, he was going to build something. Oh. What'd you say when you gave the guy, uh, showed the guy the fingers? Um, well, I plinked them quietly right. in, and I handed it to the guard. I said, here, put this in your report sheet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, uh, that's fucking great. There's so many more calls. A, a lot of safety equipment, too, on these machines yep. uh, was inconvenient. So things that would um, were meant to to shut the machine off if your hand got in there right. were usually overridden so you could just like do your job do your job with faster or quicker safety whatever. being on there yeah yeah, yeah. well we'll take more uh, calls terrible. down the road but got a nice little treat for everybody after the break oh oh is that what uh, he was working on is little, it in little surprise jocktober oh today. this is fantastic a little surprise oh, jocktober oh yeah little show's gonna teach us what funny is all about mm hmm and we're going to do that after these messages.